Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and everyone on the World Wide Web. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. Winky Wright and KTFO Boxing is proud to present Go Talk. Go no, my man, Winky. The go, greatest go, of all go, time. I'm not kidding. Okay, okay. So without okay, further ado, okay. let, let the let goats talk. Goats talk. Goats talk. Goats talk. Goats talk. And welcome, welcome, welcome. KTFO Boxing, which stands for you. Got knocked the fuck out. <laughs> and this is Go Talk. That is the unanimous and undisputed, unified. I always say unanimous, yeah. but I love saying it. But <laughs> international boxing champion of the world, Winky Wright. And to his left, we have our special guest, Mr. Fred McGriff. The crab thank dog. You, thank you. I mean, I'm, just, I'm just saying, but real. He the new <laughs> champ. He the new champ. <laughs> champ. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, this is what it's about. That's you know right. Mean? So, I done worked hard for this. Yes. You know, yes. I've been through a lot of blood you and got sweat. Ali, you got your finger covering Oscar De La Hoya, yeah, but you got yeah, your Hitman yeah. Hearns. Yeah, but it's a pleasure to be here. Oh, yeah, man. I mean, I just, I just got out of the gym. <laughs> you know, and, uh, hey, sir, on a serious note, man, Fred stay in shape. Man. All the time. Yo. Fred stay in shape. Yeah, man. we go yeah. to I go to the uh, golf course with him. I look at him. He over there eating peanuts and <laughs> you know and right? fruit and shit. He brought to the course. We over there eating hot dogs. And I say, <laughs> man, Fred trying to teach us, man. But see, yeah. what's what's funny is people expect like once you retire that you're supposed to be big and fat. <laughs> and yeah. that's a lot of them are. Yeah, 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 a lot yeah. of a lot of us are. <laughs> but they say get out of here. But they come up to you. They say, man, you in shape. What's going on? They want you, you to know, be broke yeah, down. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I'm supposed to stay <laughs> yeah, in shape, yeah, yeah. man. I got to keep working out. Because, yeah. you know, all my life, it was always constant training, yeah. training, training all the time. So Did, that, spark, did that start from the taekwondo as a kid? <laughs> <laughs> did you take taekwondo oh, as yeah, a kid? Yeah. Well, you know, growing up, you know, most kids. Yeah, take something with defensive yeah, yeah, yeah. art. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Uh, I did that for a little bit. I grew up, played a little soccer uh, as a football? kid. I well, think you you have the height and the arm. Well, I played playground football, right? But see, growing <laughs> up, I grew up uh, less than a mile from um, Tampa Stadium, where the Buccaneers played, and Aloe Piss Field, where uh, the Cincinnati Reds had right. spring training and everything. Okay. And so sports was kind of in my blood, and Tampa's known for little league baseball. Mm. You know, going back to uh, Gary Series, Sheffield, Gary Sheffield. with uh, mm-hmm. Belmont High, Heights Little League. Dwight Gooden, mm-hmm. Derek Bell. I mean, so many great players from there, but Tampa's known for their Little League. And so I played at West Tampa Little League. And so baseball is kind of like in your blood. And I don't mm-hmm. know why, but this area has been unbelievable. It's probably been um, 50 or 60 Major League Baseball players from the Tampa area. It's, I mean, it's funny. You keep saying it's a, 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 you started that era. For that's it. right. <laughs> like you were, you were a major part of that. Dog, man. The fire dog. Like for real. Yeah. Like, Okay, so let's go back to the beginning because we already know if you if you Google Fred McGriff, you know you're gonna see his stats. But you got cut at, as a sophomore, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. was that we like talking about like those changes and those shifts when something happens in your life and you take yourself mentally and physically to that and next level. to the next level? Was that that moment for you? Well, I tell people for one, it's like same with Wink. Like computers can't measure what's in your heart. That's right. That's right. You know, and so similar, like. We're winky with boxing and everything, you know, people, I'm sure he's run across guys that were bigger, yeah. faster, stronger, yeah. um, could lift more weights, yeah. quicker, but he has something in his heart that he found a way to, to beat him That's right. and win a fight. So in the same way, me getting cut, you know, it just, Whoa. okay, I'm a pro, I'm going to prove this coach and everybody else that can play. So, I tried, I never played the outfield. And so when I tried out for the team in my sophomore year, they had a senior first baseman. Uh, and his name was Isis Segura. So I'm, I'm like, man, I got no chance of making this team. So was that your decision? Did well, you make that decision? I made, yeah, no, I made the decision. Okay. I'm like, no way I can make this team as a first baseman. So I'm like, man, I'm going to try for the outfield. I never played the outfield before, <laughs> but I said, <laughs> hey, I'm going to try. I went out there, you know, two days of tryouts and everything. One ball went past me and everything. That's right. how I feel. But then, you know, back in the day, they tell you like, okay, we, we're going to post the uh, roster on the door. So come back later this evening. And you'll see if you made the team or not. And so I go back later in the evening and I didn't make the team. So I said, hey, I'm going to go back to West Tampa League. Mm-hmm. I'm going to keep playing. Mm-hmm. 
And I'm going to try again, again the next year. And the thing about it, the old coach, Paquesta, now people laugh at him all the time. And they, they give him a hard time. It's like, How you man, cut you cut Fred McGriff. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> you cut a legend, yeah. man. So they give him a hard time. But the thing about it, like I tell me, it's, it's all about your heart, man. You know, I could have quit. That's right. And just you know, went and did something else. But I'm like, no, no. Yeah. I'm going to keep fighting. I'm going to keep going. Man, well, we're, we're going to jump into all of it because I, I know personally I – you know, I came up in the era with WGN Superstation. So when you were with the Bray, that's all we saw. And you just used to abuse the Cubs every <laughs> single time. We'd be like, God, yeah, I mean, oh, <laughs> we hated to see you come to town. And then we, we'll get all of that. Okay, so. Hey, but what's funny, one thing about it is that now, I, you know, I go around town and you go out of town and everything. And everybody, that's all it was. It was WGN and TBS. That's right. You either watch the Braves or you watch the Cubs. Yep. So I got people like, yeah, uh, my granddad and grandma, they love you. Yeah. <laughs> right. You're, like, you're making me feel oh, old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, thanks, man. <laughs> so fast forward, and this is what I like about your story, because a lot of people don't like we, 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 we talk sports and people like to say, step up to the stage when that moment comes, knock somebody out or something. But you stepped up when all the scouts were coming down to see Doc Gooden. And you took that thing for a ride. <laughs> Talk about it. <laughs> you were like, well, you came to see him, but check this That's out. Right. That's right. <laughs> and away it went. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. You, you cause, feel cause, me? Because hey, if you follow baseball, especially here in the Tampa area, I mean, Dwight Gooden was the man. Right. right. I mean, right. he's throwing 95, 96 miles power with a great breaking ball. And he, he was awesome. And so he ended up being a first round draft pick. So all the scouts and everybody, when Dwight was pitching, I mean, it was 20, 30 scouts at every game he pitched and he was, you know, he was, he was awesome. And he was a, a great uh, major league pitcher. So the thing about it for me, being left-handed and everything and right. Dwight throwing that gas, but him, and then it was another pitcher named Vance Lovelace that not a lot of people may not have heard, but Vance Lovelace ended up being a first round draft pick with the Chicago Cubs. Mm. And uh, he was left handed. So that was a, like the dynamic duo on know, the same team. Yeah, Lovelace and Gooden at uh, Hillsborough High School. At uh, Hillsborough High. In yeah. Tampa. And uh, they were awesome. And, and I tell people all the time, you know, they talk, you know, I'm watching games or this and that. And they talk about all these other great pitchers and everything. But Dwight Gooden was better than all the guys. I mean, he, yeah. he you know. the doc. <laughs> yeah. 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 But you, yeah. but you got to see him, like, you know, and, and we found this out mm-hmm. about Wink. You know, Wink was training all these fighters coming down. And it was like, you know, they, he was sparring with them and they were working out. But it's the same thing for baseball. Everybody knows who the man is. And you grow up watching them in Little League and everything. So, but you just kind of, were you the standout or did you just come out of nowhere? Or were like, you know, just yeah. give me a, a good background of this high school, and then we'll just jump straight to the draft after See, that. See, I, I, I was a late bloomer because, you know, getting cut in the 10th grade and everything. Right. Usually you get on the radar, um, say, ninth, 10th grade. That's when you start getting the radar. But I, I was playing Little League Baseball at um, uh, West Tampa Little League. Mm-hmm. So while the Goodens and Lovelace and Sheffield, those guys, they've, they're playing for Bama Heights and – um, playing well at Hillsborough High School, they are already in the radar. So I was more of a late bloomer, mm-hmm. and so um, I just I just started developing. And so I was a ninth round draft pick, right? And um, it was always my goal to play professional baseball. Um, I was if I wasn't going to play uh, professional baseball, I probably would end up going to Hillsborough Community College for a couple of years, play there because in baseball you can sign out of high school, yes, or if you go to a junior college, you play two years, then you can get drafted. But if you go to a four-year school, you got to stay there at least three years, then you can get drafted. And so I was going to end up going to Hillsborough Community College, play a couple of years, mm-hmm. then try to get drafted. But something just, man, I know, you know, I wasn't a high draft pick. I was ninth round pick, but I'm going. You know, I got offered uh, uh, $22,000. Yeah. And, uh, like, What'd you do with I'm the money? I'm just going to go. What'd you do with I the bought me a car. What, what kind of car did you get? What'd back, you get? Back in the day, a Cutlass Supreme. Oh, nice. <laughs> <That> Cutlass? <laughs> <laughs> cutlass. Did, was the shifter in the flow? No, no. I had oh, a, I had on a, the uh, column? I had automatic. Yeah, had yeah, automatic. yeah, yeah. But yeah. the thing about it, you know, it had, um, it was maroon with a uh, little white top. Yeah. If you remember the Cutlass Supremes back in the day, that was it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, you had so, that top, that rag that's top. What I it was $15,000. You know, that's what I went in. And uh, you left yourself with five? <laughs> <laughs> you, hey, hey, they didn't tell me I had to pay taxes on that's it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> 
So away you went. You uh you you went on to a great career. Two hundred and eighty four batting average. Well, um close to twenty five hundred hits. Twenty four hundred and ninety. Uh, almost 500 home runs, also 1,500 runs batted in, five-time All-Star, World Series champion, three-time Silver Slugger, two-time home run leader in the different leagues, correct? National and American. Yep. And one thing about you, and, like, and I got a chance to watch you, and, and, and then also when I got to meet you earlier and, and, and golf with you, one thing about you for sure, patience. You are one of the most, and when I tell you, you used to grind pitches out. We used to, now if you go to a Braves game and if you sit on the third baseline, you're going to catch a lot of Fred McGriff foul balls. Because you would, <laughs> when I'm telling you, you would work pe- pitches to 12 to 15, you would just chop away at them and, and very rarely struck out. Like, how did that patience come? Like, you're a very patient person. You do it on the golf yeah. course too. Yeah. You just slow pay. motion. He's slow motion. He's so slow, slow motion. motion for you, <laughs> man. For real. Well, I always had to constantly work on my game, and so you learn over the years that, you know, in baseball, you're gonna fail more times than you succeed. Right. So if you're successful three out of ten times, you hit 300. You're a great player. So it's a lot of failure in between. And so coming up in the minors, you start learning how to hit. You start learning the strike zone. You start trying to hit for power and so forth. But hitting a baseball, you know, I know winky boxing is a it's beautiful tough, thing. Right. Because somebody, oh, yeah. you're trying to hit people and they're hitting on you. Oh, here we and go. Three minutes in a round, in, in a ring. That's a long time. It's extremely tough. Yes. Yeah. But trying to hit this baseball oh, it's terrible. when they throwing at you at times, the ball's dropping like winky. I'm sure. Yeah. Winky, you get him in a, a boxing ring, and he'll try to knock you out, right? But I guarantee you that you put a helmet on him and get him in the batter's box, he'll be bailing and oh. stepping in the bucket. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I hey, sure will. He'll be scared of that ball. Yeah. Sure you know? will. Ducking. You never, yeah. 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 never lied about that. Yeah. You, know, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I'll t- be telling people, you know, with football, football players the same way. Yeah. They get on the field trying to kill people. <laughs> but they get in that batter's box. Yeah. And somebody throwing that ball at them. I mean, Oof. they bail yeah. and they getting Oof. out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so it's coming hard. And so you learn to protect yourself. Be patient and everything else. So that's what when I get on the golf course, like I, I'm having to play in front of forty thousand people, right? And I and I'm struck out in front of you know yeah. big crowds. So now on the golf course, when you're hitting bad shots, you're like, man, right. hey, this ain't nothing. Right. Yeah. Only people see me messing up is the other three people playing. you're playing that's with. Right. That's right. <laughs> you know? So okay. So now you get drafted by the Yankees. They don't have a spot for you because they got Don Mattingly there, right? Um, and you were part of the one of the they they call it the lopsided the most lopsided trade in baseball, right? <laughs> Where they, the other team got more than what the Yankees got in return. The, the, you know, and history shows it. Like um, the first question I want to ask you was, what was it like playing, like in San Diego, and and like what was that? What, what did it feel like being in the big leagues now? Like now you're in you're you're playing, you're in the big leagues. It's not high school no more. And you're this real quiet, soft-spoken professional. What was it like? Well, basically, it's a dream come true. Yeah. Because, you know, all your life you're dreaming of one day playing up in the big leagues and it's staggering odds that you're going to make it. Mm-hmm. So when you finally get that first game, that, that one day in the big leagues, you're like, yes. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I did it. Yeah. All, all the hard work and paid off. Right. You know, all, like I said, taking millions of ground balls, take, hitting all the time, Work out in the gym, then I made it. So it's beautiful. But then once you get there, they're like, okay, now I got to try to stay there because they have guys in the minors who are trying to come after you every single day. You know, they hoping they hoping that you fail so they can get yes. up to the big leagues. You know, I tell people all the time. One of the toughest things for me was um, I started out with the Yankees. I got drafted by the Yankees, but I got traded to the Toronto Blue Jays. Right, that's right, Blue Jays. But also. Cecil Fielder was drafted by um, the Kansas City Royals, but he got traded to the Blue Jays, okay? And so we're buds and everything, but we're going for the same position. Exactly. You know, and so that makes it tough. I mean, we're, we're playing cards, going to dinner, hanging out. Was he smoking cigars then? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> big sass. I love big sass. Yeah. But, you know, so it was, it was tough, man, because, you you know, you don't want to pull, a, pull against somebody, but – you're going for the same position. And it turns out they had a guy named Willie Upshaw who was playing first base at the time. And they ended up letting um, 
will it go? So the first year, I DH'd against right-handed pitchers. Cecil DH'd against uh, left-handed, left-handed pitchers. Yeah. You know, and then finally they end up um, Cecil ended up going to Japan. Right. And I ended up playing uh, first base, but it was tough yeah. coming up in the minors, man, because you know it's 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 everybody's everybody's goal is to get to, to the big, big leagues. League. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like usually like okay, if Winky ain't playing my position. Th- then we're buds, right. you know, but, but if you play my but, position, but if we can play in first you. base, then it's like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love you, you, I love you. but, but you yeah. know, I hope, I hope you, I hope you mess up. Yeah. Who were some of the people like, you know, I, I also saw the era of Chet Lemon and Harold Baines and Andre Dawson. Like who did anybody have you in R kind of intimidate you when you was like, were you not intimidated, but like, were you kind of starstruck a little bit? Like, you know, Ooh. Well, I wouldn't say, but it was, it was a lot of good players like the Dave Parkers, uh, Eric Davis. Did you ever meet Willie Stargell? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Willie Stargell, just, yeah. just good human beings. But I, I tell a lot of times I tell people, see, baseball is a different animal because when it comes to ba- and the, most guys have to go to the minor leagues first. So, like, when you're in high school, usually the only people you got watching you play is your mom and dad, <laughs> maybe your brothers and sisters, but that's it for the most part. Then if you go to college – um, unless you play at a big school like LSU, LSU, Alabama, they get like 15, 20,000, they get big fans. But other than that, ain't nobody coming to watch you in college. When you're playing minor league baseball, similar to like the Tampa Tarpons, uh, Tampa Yankees now over in Tampa, they get hundred fans, 200 fans. <laughs> ain't nobody watching oh, yeah. you play. So you really got a chance to mature and grow up, you know? So baseball really has a lot of get good people. If you run into a, a guy that's a bad apple on, on the ba- as a baseball player. That's pretty rare. Yeah. But see, you, you, you take, and I tell people, you take football. Football players, if they're good in high school, they worship in high school. Oh, man. So, da, 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 da. They, they worship. Right. They go on these college campuses, and they go to these big, and they worship again. Oh, man, you know, oh, you, you, you play at Florida, Florida State, you know, Alabama, you know, they – you worship, and then you play up in the, play up in the big leagues. So now, some of these, you know, they get the big head. It's a, it's a whole different animal because, hey, man, I, I, I'm I, good. I, I, I've good been a man since high school right. and everything else, man. And then now, you know, they don't know how to react when they have issues or whatever. It's like, man, I've been a man this whole time. And so I, th- I think it's, baseball just a lot of good people, but you learn just to go, go out there and play. You know, because mm-hmm. baseball, it, you know, it's a great game, but it's also a humbling game. <laughs> Absolutely. Because you can be busy rolling, and then next night, three strikeouts, <laughs> four strikeouts. Wow. Can be <laughs> ugly. You came up, uh, there was no ESPN. It, it was the development of it as, it as as you were progressing in your career. Then, you know, and Chris Berman is a big star. He comes up with uh, Fred the Crime Dog McGriff. But you were already mm. Fred. Fire dog. <laughs> Fire dog. <laughs> Which one do you like better? Well the, cra- well, the thing about it, whatever they say about you on TV, true or false, right? It's gonna stay. Yeah, it's you know, yeah. It, 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 even if you know it, it ain't, even if the story ain't true, yeah, it's it. it. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And so Chris Berman, he's on ESPN, and he's giving everybody nicknames. He was the first and original guy that was giving guys nicknames, and so. My last name is spelled M C G R I F F, and McGruff is M C G R U F F. And so, once he said it, it was done. <laughs> just, just, <laughs> you can't argue just, with it. <laughs> but I finally met him. I ended up meeting Chris Berman's a big man. I mean, he's six five, um, six five, six six, just a big old man. But uh, he he's good people. Um, in your second year, you hit a uh, thirty. 34 home runs. And then the next year for your first seven uh, consecutive seasons, you had uh, 30 home runs, like phenomenal. And then you were the top power hitter in the American league in 1989, leading the league with 36 home runs, including the first home run in the sky dome, helping the blue Jays win the AL East. Like you should have been a mega star then, like just for those accomplishments. Like did you, did, were there any difficulty? Like, did you ever feel like you should have gotten more recognition or did you, were you, cause you, you don't, you're not the per you're not a braggadocious person, Fred. Right. Like we, a lot of these athletes, a lot of them that are great, they, they, they talk because it's part of their persona to keep them motivated. But 
you're not that guy. You never did that. Like, did you ever, I mean, say this, say something. Like, did no, you I, ever? Well, I, was, I, I felt I always blessed. I was blessed. There you go. And I leave it up to other people to, uh, to do the talking and just, hey, I'm going to go out and play this game. Uh, I, I've been very blessed to play this game. And so, like, I, I can go to sleep every night knowing that I played the game right, you know, mm-hmm. did the best I could. But that's just, I guess my upbringing, you know, my mom was a school teacher and my dad a uh, TV repairman. And um, it was always just instilling me just to, because uh, I, I had to, you know, I had to go work. I had to work for everything. You know, right. ain't nothing wasn't then given to me because you run into situations where somebody's giving there, so giving that. Yeah. But I had to work uh, yeah, just, at all of it, man. I had to work. Mm. He stayed humble, man. I got to give it to him. You know, I talk a lot of trash in golf. That's a, <laughs> boxing, I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm talking not a boxing. trash talking boxing. What? You know, I, yeah. Boxing, no. Nah, boxing, it was yeah. more like, okay, we're going to fight. So I ain't no need to be talking trash because we're going <laughs> to fight. You know, but in golf, you know, I would talk. I would have to talk to get in Fred's head because Fred hit the ball real far. <laughs> so I used to have to get in his head and try to mess his game up. And, you know, I just tease him like that. But Fred would just laugh at you and joke. And he won't, you know, he don't, he'll never come back with nothing personal, you know, like, yeah, I'm gonna get you this. He just chill. Hey, but I'm curious. So, you're boxing in the ring. Mm-hmm. Some guys are guys talking noise yeah, to yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, Oh, yeah. We talk we talk all the time. Oh, the really? Ring. I like that. That's different. Yeah, we, we man, right here, yeah. You know, like, oh, man, you, I'm gonna get you. Okay. Take, take your time. Uh, Good shot. Oh, I caught you with that one. You know what I'm saying? Okay. You hear stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? Oh, you felt that. You felt that. You, you felt that. <laughs> Okay. Uh, and I'll be like, uh, yeah, keep standing there. I'm going to keep busting you with this jab. Keep standing there. So, you know, you talk trash like that. <laughs> now, what, uh, was it ever one guy? She's like, man, I ain't going to talk no noise to him, man. No, nah, right. nah, okay. it mainly for me, if it's talking trash, just somebody who, you know, talk trash in the way in and all the whole press conference, all that kind of stuff. So, it, it, I got now I got something I want to prove against you. But majority of the time, it's just like you said, it's, it's a competition. You know, like I tell people, boxing is not a game. You know, baseball is a game. Football is a game. Boxing is fighting. It's <laughs> not no game. It ain't right. no reset. It ain't no timeout. Let me go sit on the bench for a little bit it's and send, it, send somebody uh, else in. You know, yeah, so, yeah. so this is serious. So, you know, you you got you to gotta treat it like that. You know, I, it, it's just something that I enjoy doing. You know, I had a lot of fun doing, you know what I mean? And I'm, I was, like you said, I was blessed to have the ability to do it. And, you know, God just looked out for me. There's a lot of times that, you know, I got in a situation where I thought, Maybe I, dang, man, I don't think I'm going to get this because, you know, I didn't have the greatest training camp or, you know, one fight. So my first fight overseas, I was fighting in Tampa all the time. But my first fight overseas, uh, the European promoters were like, okay, we're going to bring you over here to fight. I was like, okay, but I didn't know who they, they brought me over there to fight another American. But the American, he was a, he was a world contender. And I remember he's from D.C. too, and I remember seeing him fight a lot of people, and he could fight. And they were like, okay, this is who you fight. And I was like, okay, you know, I'm young. I'm, 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 I'm like, I don't care. But I got sick that week. So I usually go, I usually would fly to, fly to Paris. Uh, like, if I got to fight that Saturday, I would fly out there that Sunday, the Sunday before. So I stay out there that whole week. I got sick. So I'm talking about death. I mean, I got sick. I had like okay. the, the flu. Sick so, how? Yeah. The Stomach, flu. Like, no, 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 no. Just, <laughs> just the flu. I, I overheated. Coughing. Yep. And, yeah, had fever and all that. So guy made up this little this little crazy remedy, some honey, onions, <laughs> and some <laughs> lemons. And he told me, just take this, you know, so because I can't even train while I'm there, you know, because you, you got to train, get acclimated. But I couldn't do nothing. So I was just like, so I started taking my training. Like, where we going to take? We're going to take it. We're going to see how you do. Thursday and then Friday we got the weigh in, so you weigh in the day before, mm-hmm. and then you fight Saturday. So I'm like, okay, we'll see. Yeah, I just kept, kept taking a little remedy, kept taking it. Then uh, that 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 Friday at the weigh ins you know, I, I had to still a little chill and everything. <laughs> so then I weighed in. So then that night I just rested, rested. So I'm saying to myself, man, look here, this is gonna be a tough fight, but it is what it is. So you know, I'm here. These people want to see me fight. I gotta win. So I went out there, man. Shoot, I caught dude in the first round. He was, he right. came out strong. I was just moving, but when I caught him, I said, "Oh, he not getting out this round." <laughs> I, can't, I, I can't do no eight rounds right now. So you know, I just went. I just started swinging at him every which way, and they stopped the fight. And I was happy with that. So, like I said, you know, God got a plan for you, and you know what I mean. Just, just stick to it. Okay, I got one more question for you. Uh-oh. I'm curious. Oh, okay. Mike Tyson. Now, uh-huh. now, is he the greatest fighter you've seen, or who's who's the one fight that you like, man. Muhammad Ali. Oh, okay. By hands, by, down. By hands down. But listen, Mike is, is is an amazing, dynamic fighter because his his 
unknowingly what's going to happen at any time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? With Mike, yeah. you never know what happens. So it's you volatile. can't go. You can't go to the bathroom. You can't go get another drink. You better sit there and watch the fight. Right. You got one minute okay. in between the rounds. Right. So okay. Mike is explosive. Mike is just that great. But if you if you really just look at Muhammad Ali and go back and watch his tapes and see how he moved, how he punched, how he carried himself, the man was just amazing. It, it, it's crazy to be be that gifted and you know. For people that, you know, try to have so much animosity against you back then, you know, telling him he can't do this. We we don't we don't recognize Muhammad Ali. You catch a clay and he got to fight back. So he had all this and he still was a great champion, a great fighter, man. It was it's unbelievable. You can't he is the greatest. You can't go against it. Not just because of boxing, because of his whole life. Okay, cause see that's awesome. Cause like same way for me, like I know you you hear fans talk about this player and that player. Yeah. But I, I, I judge players a little different than everybody else because I'm, I'm looking for at all their tools and everything. Like So for me, Barry Bonds was that man. the best player that I ever played against because he, he could steal bases, hit for power, I mean, hit for average. Yeah. And, and he was awesome. While other people may say, ah, oh, this guy's that. I'm like, man, Barry, no, was, yeah. Barry Bonds yeah, was, B was, was a good awesome. Dude, so the same B way, you know, dude. for me, yeah. I'm just a fan, just yeah. reading, listen to reporters, listen to announcers. And so they say this and that. But when you're talking to a person who's been in the ring That's right, who and does boxing that. Yeah. and who who done study fighting, and then you say Ali, so yeah. That's a whole different game. It's a whole different listen, just just imagine you, you know, when you was coming up, what if they was like, Well, Fred, you know, we we don't, you know what I'm saying, you can't you're gonna have to stay out two years before you can uh, go to the pro because uh you didn't make you you didn't make your junior high school team or some something like that. It just they take your prime away and you still come back, you still fight against all the odds and, and still show greatness, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. poise and all the stuff that he did outside the ring for the for our people, you know what I'm saying? It just it's amazing, man. The dude was incredible. Yeah. So you played on an incredible <laughs> team that, like, all the teams are good. You played on the Padres. You played on the Rays. You got to come come home and play for the Tampa Bay Rays. You got the um, opportunity to play for the Cubs. But that Braves team, yeah. man, golly. You, <laughs> were, were you, it, it felt like you were the captain of the team. Were you the captain of the team? <laughs> well, back then, I always tell people, like, usually the man, if you got a good manager, the manager should be the man who run in the ship. So we really didn't have a captain of the team because Bobby Cox, he was a man and he kept everybody in line. What usually happens is when you got a manager who's kind of like he's happy with his job, he's scared to get on the players, he's like, okay, I'm going to designate you as the captain. So when stuff go on in the locker room or clubhouse, you deal with yeah, it. Yeah, you got to deal right. with it. I don't want to deal with it, but Bobby Cox, <laughs> he if he got issues, he's a hey, David Justice, you know, hey, I need to see you in the office. Andrew Jones, yeah. I need to see you in the office. He 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 gonna deal with it rather than, all right, Winky, yeah, um, go, go talk to Justice <laughs> for me, man. You know, yeah, go yeah. go. Man, nah, dude, you you're the you the manager of the team. Right. You do it, you know, man. You Andrew it. Jones, David, just you brought like I remember the outfield for the Braves when they you had Brian Jordan. Deion Sanders, yeah, yeah. like, <laughs> come on, and, like the, the hey, third baseman. And the thing about uh, Chipper Jones Chipper and Terry Jones. Pena, but. To me, like I see, I see every time I see Dion on TV, I start laughing. Cause, Why? Because I think about the pad, you know. Because Dion's a funny man. Yeah. yeah. Dion's a very funny man, and now you know he's coaching at uh, Jackson, Jackson State. State. I don't know how long he's gonna be there. Right. Not long. They say TCU is uh, trying to get him to go there, but Dion, Dion's a funny man. <laughs> so every day in this clubhouse, you're laughing. But the thing with baseball, we do a whole lot of traveling, so we'll go to a city. And we're there three days, but then we gotta hop on a we gotta hop on a bus, and the bus is taking you to the airport. So then now you know you get off the plane, and now you got you in another bus going to the hotel and stuff like that. And so you got like 40, 50 minutes, an hour at a time bus rides where guys are just cracking up, you know. And then and when you, when you're winning, you can get on guys. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Now when you're losing, <laughs> you try to get guys want to fight. Yeah. But when you get on, when you're winning, like, oh yeah. wink, man, you got why you got that shirt on, yeah. man. Laughing, <laughs> 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 but when you're losing, man, no man, you losing, man, why you getting on me, man? <laughs> you don't like, you don't like my shirt, man. <laughs> so, but but Dion, he just he, he just he's a clown. He just he got you laughing all the time, man. Did you have a a, a like you know, we we everybody's friends and everybody's professional. But who was your partner? Like who was your man fifty grand on that Bra Braves team? Like you know, uh, well, like well, with baseball, usually what happens is um, you play the game, and after every game, they got food in the locker room. Mm -hmm. 
So usually um, you play the game ends, game ends 10 o'clock, 10 30, whatever you go, you, you eat a spread. Then usually it just all depends. Everybody go their separate ways. So it's tough to, after game, you got to kind of like, the, you got your adrenaline flowing. You got to relax. You think about what you did good, what you did bad, what you could have did different. You know, if you screwed up and you made an error, you know, and hopefully it didn't cost your team a game. Right. But you had to break down. So just all, every, it was always somebody different, all the pins. But with the Braves, uh, Mark Lemke, um, he was the second baseman. And so we had to communicate all the time on the field. Um, you know, hey, this guy, if this guy bunts, you cover the bag. Or if he bunts it at you, I cover the bag. Um, we got a big power hitter up. I'm playing close to the line. So now you got to move over. So communication is, is huge when you're out there on that field. And so we just always chit chat here and there. So after the game, sometimes you're just like, oh, man, you know, let's shoot the breeze and see what's going on and stuff like that. So okay. but usually on a team, I mean, it's three or four guys get together. You know, um, it was awesome, you know, playing with Shep. Yeah. Play with yeah. Shep in San came, Diego. That yeah, we like that. Yeah. We like that. We're gonna we're gonna do a break yeah. real fast for our sponsors. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we'll come right back yeah. with you. Ah. T K oh, K T F O. Get it right. My Get man, it right. K T F. We'll be right back. Wiki Wright presents K T F O Boxing's Go Talk. Here's one of the goat stars right now. Welcome back, KTFO Boxing, where you got knocked the fuck out. <laughs> that, is, that is undisputed and unified Boxing Hall of Fame with Winky Wright. And we have Mr. Fred <laughs> McGriff. Crime dog. Fire yeah. dog. <laughs> hey, but, 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 wait, wait, time out. I got to ask you, though. I got, because this. This, this is Mr. Winky, right? Yes, there sir. You go. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. But, tighten up. Tighten you know, up. Yeah, let me straighten up. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you, you didn't work hard because you, you yes. know, you're training for four or five months, or whatever, yeah. for this fight. Yeah. Okay. Now, what's the feeling when you sign, find, when you knock somebody out? Oh, you happy to get it over with. You know what I'm saying? It just feel you hit somebody on that button and they go down. You're like, oh, man, that was perfect. And you want to go back and watch it when it happened again. You see that? That's what I did. You know? <laughs> so it just, it's just a great experience. Like I said, you you know, people like baseball play. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to say that because when I played, I played baseball, football, and basketball growing up. In little league, I love baseball. I played shortstop, second base. You know what I'm saying? I played back catcher. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I played. All, yeah, yeah, I played baseball good. What? So I used to, I used to learn. Hey, you hear him say you played it good. Yeah, I played it good, but, uh, but I didn't. That listen, means listen, you already know what that means. No, 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 no. For real though, listen. So growing up in DC back then, so I grew up in DC. So back then we ain't had no baseball team. I ain't wasn't no baseball team. So we on we only saw football. We only saw football and boxing. Ray Leonard. Yeah. So I ain't really had no baseball. I, you know, we played baseball, but it wasn't no, you know, I wasn't inspired you had to, watch to play basketball. No, no, no. no. <laughs> so then the next thing I know, you know what I'm saying? When I moved to Florida, that's when I met Sheffield. And then I was seeing how these baseball players making all this money. I'm like, God, I went into the wrong sport. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, and then when you try to do it, then it's, it's so, it's, man, these guys make it look easy. You know, they train to make it look easy. They hit that ball. They run and catch that ball. It's like, oh, man, they just catching the ball. That look easy. Yeah. I want you to get in front of the ball coming 95 miles per hour. Or I want somebody to hit the ball right at you, and I want you to be able to catch it just like that. So they train to make it easy. That's what boxing. People say, man, why you ain't do this in the ring? Why you ain't throw this left hand? Why you ain't slip it? I want to see you do it. It <laughs> look easy. It look easy because we train to make it look right. easy. We right. train to do that. So that's why we can slip that punch and counter or, or block that shot and come back. Because we train to do it. Okay. Now, so say you got a fight and you knock the guy out, whatever. Uh -huh. And so say what happens if you see him like two days later or, <laughs> or, or, or whatever. Now, d does he say, good job, wink it? Yeah. Or he like, man. No, nah, it, 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 you know, it, it's the sport. It's, listen, it's part of the game. You're going to win, you're going to lose. You can't be a, 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 a poor sportsman because it, and, and eventually in the end it's going to catch up to you. So, Say it again. You know, you got to take the good with the bad. You 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 lost that night, but you can win another night. So that's what that's what happened. So pretty much everybody cool, you know what I'm saying, unless you got real beef or issue with someone. If you, When you fight, it's out. It's out. So what we beefing about now, we done fought. Right. Me and you been mad, we yelling, we cussing each other out. Now we done fought. You won, okay, cool. It's over with now. Okay, so if you see a guy at a restaurant, a couple, it's like, oh, no. good, man. Yeah, no, 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 no. Okay. No, 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 I don't it. Mm -mm. I mean, it ain't like that. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So, Fred, I, I know you do you, you do scouting and you you keep your hand and your your finger on on baseball. How's how's the game changed now? Like when you watch it now, as opposed to when? Because y'all used to fight a lot too. 
The Braves used to fight like all the time. And was Rocker there when you were there? I played. I, I, he was not. Well, not when I was there. He I played, played against, against him. Okay, yeah. okay. But yeah. so how's the game changed though? But now the analytics have taken over. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Harvard and Yale guys uh, are running things now. It's all about the uh, computer and track man, the Billy Bean system, stuff like that. Yeah. That, that that's taking over. And so mm-hmm. that's the biggest thing. Because um, back in the day, because basically I try to tell people um, what my eyes see. That's what the computer is going to text. Those are numbers that's going to pop up. If I see a guy strike out three or four times, the numbers are going to tell me, Fred, he's a swinging miss guy. You know, so analytics have taken over, and they, they, they're in all sports now. You know, football, same way now. Uh, the analytics have taken over. Teams are, instead of punting the ball, they're going for it on fourth down. Right. No more kicking field goals for the most part. It's let's go for it. And so that's the way the game is uh, it's totally different because um, I'm more of a little – Old school, but new school is uh, analytics. But the thing about it is, like, a lot of the Harvard and Yale guys, they ain't never been on a baseball field. Okay, so since they never been on a baseball field, the only way they can justify the positions that they're in is through the numbers. Because they ain't, they ain't never put a glove on. They ain't never, mm-hmm. they ain't never played. Mm-hmm. Right. So I got to have numbers to tell me um, if this player is a good player, if this player is a bad player, is this pitcher a good player? Cause I don't know, cause I I ain't, I ain't been out did, there. Yeah. So numbers is my way of becoming a general manager, right? <laughs> or team owner, president. Yeah, I gotta have numbers, and so it, that's how it's changed. Yeah, I hear you loud and clear on that. So now, like, and you, you know, one thing about your career that I always admired too, like, I mean, you were a killer. You were a killer, and then guys started cheating in the game. Uh, like, how do you how do you deal with that psychologically? And was it rough or like what? Was, what was, like it was just part of it, you know? Because we all know the guys. Like when I was in high school, people were taking steroids and taking, uh, you know, injecting, having beers at, at in only in eighth grade. You know what I mean? So it's part of the sport then. But then when they cracked down on it and they got into the testosterones and all the enhancements and PEDs like by that time were you walking away from the game or yeah, it was more towards the end of my career but the thing about it is that um, <clears throat> baseball is kind of like it's a fraternity yeah because every you know me myself playing first base every night for the most part guys are coming to first base you know the, the opposing team they're coming to first base and you're chit-chatting all the time what's up man yeah. you know what I mean so um, and then now, um, so guys are doing steroids, but you don't know because the thing you know, I know somebody will say like, "Oh, it was seventy or eighty percent guys doing steroids." You don't know because the same way, you know, in the corporate world, business, world, if somebody's doing drugs or whatever, they ain't gonna come out publicly. I'm telling you, hey, yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm doing, doing this. I'm doing this. <laughs> no, they ain't gonna do it. Yeah, you know, yeah, so you ain't yeah. gonna know. So the yeah. same way with baseball, you know, yeah. you, you speculate. You may see a guy get big, and you're like, "Man." You got pretty big right there. Right. <laughs> like, what's up with you, cat? You are first mate, like, yo, what's up with you? You look at <laughs> something got to be going on, man. Right? Like, like, cause I know I, I'm in that same gym, yeah, and I ain't getting that big right. in, that, in that same gym, <laughs> right? You know, so you you, you laugh sometimes, but the thing about it is, you know, you know, you got to be true to yourself, and That's I just right. I could still hit my home runs, and so I was going out of there, and uh, I was making good money, and so you just. You just keep rolling and, yeah. and think about it. You know, I ain't going to like, oh, man, this right. dude, you know, this dude doing steroids. And they're going to look at you like, man, yeah, you know what? Yeah. 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 But you jealous, you know, listen to that. And so. What uh, they should have been jealous of is that the longest running commercial still to this <laughs> day. That damn little. You remember them little <laughs> league? Uh, with the, <laughs> oh, hey, throw them hey. into the garbage can. Hey. That commercial hey. ran for 10 years, dog. 20. Oh, I'm sorry. 20. Yeah, yeah. 20. No, no, the phrase, I don't know. Get it right. Get it right. Two hey. decades. Hey. Guaranteed to get results. <laughs> 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 I fell up again. Hey. But the yeah. thing about it is, like, it, it was coming on every single day, yep. <laughs> every single evening. It was on ESPN. And usually in, in the clubhouses uh, and all the stadiums, ESPN is usually on uh, oh. before the game. Right. So that commercial is on. I could be in the training room getting taped up or whatever for a game. Here come that. Here come that commercial. <laughs> you know. So, I, so you got to you got to shoot out the training room, right? Or or if you're in the locker room getting dressed, you just get on out there because guys, like like I said, yeah. I'm playing with the same guys for six and seven months. You're 
you're with the same guys. I mean, you're playing 162 games, like I said, eating, sleep. I mean, it's so they're your buds. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so uh, you, you just, you, you got to be, we well, always we say like, you got to be able to take, people going to rag and you got to be, as long as you stay off moms. Yeah, that's right. Know, yeah. Don't talk about moms. Sounds but great. so you just, uh, real you know, fight then. <laughs> so yeah. just, for real, for real. So you just, you know, so you, so you learn to just live with it and uh, that commercial every single night. Tom Amansky, here it comes. Here it comes. And, and I tell people, I ain't never seen the commercial. <laughs> so, so. <laughs> I mean, I never seen the video. I never seen yeah. the video. You never watched the video. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Who gets it? The check kept coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you also, great businessman too, by the way. I, I always appreciate it. Like, we used to go hang out at Blue Martini all the time, you know, and you obviously you made a lot of money, protected your money, made a lot of great moves. What do you want to do next now with, with, as you know, life ascends to the next level. Like, where do you personally want to see yourself, and what what do you want to do? You just want to just sit back, retire, play golf every day. Do you want to still be involved with the sport? Do you want to raise grandkids or kids? Well, like, what what do you want to do? Yeah, try, try, try to just give back. Yeah, you know, because I've I've been I've been very blessed. So hopefully, you know, if I can like help out one or two. Kids, I mean, even just one, you know, I, I feel like I've done a good job, but just try to give back yeah. to um, society. People try to help out, you know, people try to, um, young kids cr- coming up, trying to, um, inner city kids, trying to um, develop some kids because baseball, you know, it's not a lot of uh, African-American players uh, How playing did nowadays. Because they always, did, was, was it true? I've always heard that. Major League Baseball was concerned about not enough inner city of black kids playing and Dominicans and, and Cubans taking over the game. Like, was that true? Did is there were they were they trying to develop programs and get more black kids into baseball? Well, what happened? They're, they're trying now. But okay. We, but what happened is the same way. Like I try to tell people, baseball uh, probably 15, 20 years ago, um, they went to Dominican and they were signed like. Um, 500,000, just a whole lot of Dominican players. Because at the time, that's more considered cheap labor right. because the kids in the States, they got to go through the draft and they got to sign um, 20000 30000 $40,000, whatever, if you draft an American kid. But you could go over to Dominican and you could give them a glove contract, a shoe contract, a bat contract, and you sign them. Yeah. Okay, but I tell people it's the same way <clears throat> as with the shoe companies. You know, the Nikes, Adidas, all these different shoe companies, instead of um, building the shoes here in the States, they no, build them overseas. they right. go overseas and they they build them for cheap. Mm-hmm. You know, they probably they probably sell, make Nike shoes for <laughs> dollar, two dollars, whatever it costs to make a Nike shoe. And then they ship them all back over here and they sell them for a hundred, two hundred bucks. You know, so in the same way with baseball and that's what happened. So that's how now, you know, you, you sign so many Latin players. Now they start getting good, you know, and they start making it up to the big leagues. Right. And so you start seeing less, um, African-American players. Right. Uh, Cause when I was coming up, it was, it was a lot of African-American players, but now it's not that many. And, and, and an average fan that's watching TV or games on TV, they see dark skinned players and they say, Oh, no, it's a lot of African American players out there. Can't speak a <laughs> word lick of English. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but they're <laughs> they're Latin players. So, yeah. hope, but and also like um, nowadays, kids play travel ball. Okay, and travel ball is expensive. So to play to play baseball, you know, you gotta get, have a glove, shoes, a bat. It's expensive, you know, because when it comes to, to to play basketball, all I need is I need one person with a basketball, and let's find us a. Um, uh, a rim, a basket, and we can play. Mm-hmm. So you just need that one bat. Football, just football. I got a little area. <laughs> give me this football, right? And we all can play. But with baseball, it's so much tougher to um, like organize. Said, bag, glove, get yeah. Find the field. Usually nowadays, the fields got uh, they're chained up. They're lock, got locks on the fields. You can't just you know maybe you could just jump over the fences, but it's hard to get in yeah. a lot of these. Um, Facilities, facilities. Yeah, yeah. they got them all locked up, so it's tough. But travel ball is expensive. When I was coming up, Little League Baseball cost my um, parents like $35. And everybody played Little League Baseball. Now, 
Travel ball is three thousand dollars, thirty five hundred, four thousand. It's IMG it's costs thirty grand a, a semester. That's crazy. Oh yeah, IMG's yeah. getting it now. Oh yeah, I went over. I went down there. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Yeah, they, you name it, they got it, and it's they're charging huge money. And so, a lot of the um, African American kids, I mean, the parents can't afford uh, for them to uh, to play travel ball and stuff like. So they got to start finding a way to get little league. Little league baseball back and strong and uh, make it a little, a little more accessible uh, if they if they really want to make changes. Got you. So to wrap and, and we'll, we'll we'll get to wrap things up because you know we know you have a golf tournament that you have to play in <laughs> lefty. That's right. Yeah, yeah. I, I gotta get Winky because Winky, you know, Winky be wearing me out, man. <laughs> I used to. I ain't gonna lie. I used to, but Fred now, man, he had beat no, me no, like right. a bad yeah, habit, yeah. man. <laughs> no, no, no. Fred hit the ball deep, like man. a baseball that player. Baseball swing. Yeah. Yeah. Every baseball player I play with, man, they hit the ball so far. I'm like, what in the world, y'all doing? How you? I'm talking about that swing. Fred got the longest slow. Slow is swing. Slow, too. It's like, slow. Is we, is we like, going to do this tick, today tick, or tomorrow? <laughs> 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 when Fred hit that ball, man, it's that pow. And Sheffield, it's like Sheffield got a fast swing. Yeah. But when he hit that ball, that ball pow. I'm like, my, my ball go poof. <laughs> then a ball pow, pow, poof. You still have the, uh, the pit bulls, Fred? No, no, you don't got no, the pit bulls. No, I remember no, we, we used to go past his house and the dog, <laughs> you know, the dog. You don't got the pit bulls. Okay, so, um, Wrapping things up, what would you want people? Uh, you know, I, I like straight from the horse's mouth. You know, what? You know, we all know that all athletes. You know, I lifted my heart out on the field. I gave it my all. But like, you know, you were, again one of the most scrappy, most just defensive hitters. Like, I, I, is that the term? Like, you would wear pitchers down. Like it. It wasn't an easy strikeout. To Fred, you could not strike Fred McGriff out easily, you know. And you were great off. You always stepped up. It all you always got the hit when you needed it. The run batted in. I'll I'll, I'll stop gloating. <laughs> yeah. But what would you want? What would you want people to know about you and your baseball career from your mouth? I just I, I was consistent. You know, when I damn I played the game right. Yeah, day in and day out, I showed up. Showed out. And I played it, and, and, I, and I played it right. <laughs> yeah. In, in the same way, where Winky, you know, when he when he knocked out um, a, a opponent, you know, that was the ultimate for him. So me, for me to hit that home run, that was the ultimate because I trained constantly to be able to hit a ball over the fence. Right. And so when you finally do it, you're like, yeah, you know, you round those bases, you and you you, you round the bases like you've been there, done that. You know, like, hey, man, this ain't no big deal to me, man. I do it all the time. Yeah. I'm going to run my, round my bases, and you throw another one in there, I'm going to get you again. So you had Just, that hitter's mentality, too. Like, you, 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 your goal was to knock it out the park. Yeah, and, and, and it's mental because, yeah. I, I, you know, I, I would never dog a picture in the paper or whatever because they, they, read, they read the paper. And so I want them to throw another one right in there. And so you <laughs> round the bases like you've been there, done that. Hey, if the reporter says, man, you kill that man, you know, the pitcher made a good pitch, man. I just, you know, he, <laughs> he's a good pitcher, man. Like I tell people, the, the all-star games were great for me because I would go to the all-star game. And so at the all-star game, you're in the same locker room with the best of the best, the best pitchers in either National League, American League, and you hanging out with them and everything. And I would like, man, I'll tell it, you know, the, the clubhouse guy, get me some baseballs. And I go like, hey, man, you know, Roger Clemens. Sign this, you know. I, I get all these pictures to sign it, sign balls for them. Then you talk to them and like, man, you got good stuff, man. Your stuff is unbelievable because you, you know, once you, once you know, you you kind of get them and you get that edge on them. Yeah. Or, or when somebody's asking me to sign a baseball for them, then I know I got them. Right, <laughs> you know? you've arrived. Oh yeah, because yeah, he's a <laughs> uh, he's a fan. He's yeah. a buddy. Yeah. You know I mean, so now I can I can dig in in that batter's box and be like, hey, he ain't gonna hit me. You know, we were just talking. You know, right, like, right. Oh, we're like, I go, and so it's how you know. Is I, this psychological? I, I played. Like I, played that? Yeah. I, I tried to play the mental game. Okay, okay. You know, it was. It was all. It was. You know, mentally, that's. It's big. You gonna let? You gonna bring the mustache back, man? Uh, you know. <laughs> not, man, man. <laughs> he he said it's too saying. much grain in here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I shave every couple of days yeah. now. 
You were a part of building up that whole Atlanta legacy too, because you know Atlanta made that shift in the '90s, right? Right after the uh, the Olympics, and then with the Braves and the popularity. Do you still love, enjoy, you know, going to Atlanta and hanging out? Do you still go to Atlanta and hang out a lot? Yeah, I still. Um, I'm still employed by him. Uh, I do a little scouting and so forth. And so I was there up for the World Series yep. and everything. Congratulations! And, and, you know, Atlanta's a great city. Yeah. You know, you know, I I was born and raised here in Tampa, but if I if I didn't, if I hadn't built a home here in Tampa, you know, I, I was in Atlanta. I mean, it's in Atlanta. great. Yeah. So you take away the weather, you know, because it can get a little cool, you know, yeah. here and there. Yeah. But it's, uh, and the traffic, you know, that traffic, that Atlanta traffic. You lived in Chicago, friends. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, Toronto, yeah, yeah, stop yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, about the weather. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> hey, hey, you see, I like sunshine. That's, right. That's, That's right. right. Give me sunshine. I'm okay, man. But it's just me personally, I know we get to the end, but man, this it's really an honor, yeah. you know, to. Being here, and, man, that's uh, right. I get to interview we, my dog, yeah. the crime dog. Man, we play a lot mm -hmm. of golf, man. We 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 have a lot of fun together. You know, that's one thing about Florida. You know, what I'm saying you get to enjoy all the athletes, and you know, we 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 tend to know each other and tend to become friends and and have a great bond. And uh, like I say, there's plenty of times we call Fred to come over the water to St. Pete to whoop up on him. And you know what I'm saying? Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. I'm telling the truth. Yeah, and then, you know, it gets to the point when Fred hitting that ball good, they don't want to call Fred. No <laughs> <laughs> when Winky got belts, you know, when you got, when you got belts and everything, you got some belts over there and everything, that, that's the real deal. I mean, and, and, and it's heavy. You got a lot of trophies too, yeah, Fred. You got yeah, them but, silver but, slugger, yeah, sluggers. Right, right. But like Winky was saying, right? Football, <laughs> baseball, they like team games and everything. But when it comes to boxing, no they, game. No boss. And they fight. You the boss. This they is one-on-one. -on -one. That's it. Trying to knock each other out. Hey. Yes, sir. Hey. Well, definitely, I, I, I appreciate you, and thank you so much. I mean, hey, it's man. been a pleasure knowing you, Fred. You one of the good. Like, I, we used to, you used to sit up there. I, you let me come up to the uh, up to the bar that you own, and we'll sit there. And me and Fred just be sitting there. It'll just be three minutes, four minutes, five minutes. You all right? Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> you see her? Yeah, I see her. Okay. That's crazy. I never knew you owned that bar, Fred. He was part of the group. I ain't even know that. And I used to see you up there all the time, but I'm t I, I don't drink. You know, I don't drink. So I, I do just go there every blue moon, you know what I'm saying? But I see Fred in there walking around talking to everybody. I just thought everybody knew him. And, you know, that's Fred McGuff. So everybody know him, you know what I'm saying? I never really noticed. You, didn't you notice just said it. All the baseball players. I met Jeter up in there. Man, I never, up I in never, there. I never, I never knew everybody Fred used to come see Fred. I, I thought they were just coming to the thing. Shit. That's all right, Fred. You know, Tampa legend. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, mess with Fred, you be dead. Yeah, you know Oh, baby, the my man. Man. Fred, awesome! You we definitely you, my you, you are yeah. goat. You are goat. Yeah, uh, and, and, and like, and, and in my mind, I mean, I watched it. I watched it in Chicago. I watched you play all the time. You were definitely, definitely a Hall of Fame player in my mind. Yes, appreciate so, it. Thank you. Thank you so awesome. much. That's what I, you know. What I'm saying I like the way awesome. my man carry himself. You know what I'm saying? Like I true said, professional, true professional, and 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 always. You know, he humble and good dude, man. So I, like I said, I definitely. No, I'm ahead to you. Always show up when you call him to. Always uh, there for you. So you, yeah. you, 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 you one of the realest, Fred, for real. Thank you. Crime yeah. dog. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back with KTFO. There we go. There, there we go. go. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all take it easy. We out. See ya.